So how can we help, though, in explicitly teaching vocabulary, how to manipulate words to try to get across what you want to say? So an example would be, and, and, this, and I taught so, uh, writing in a community college in Seattle for a long time, and so this is where a lot of my research came out of. So for example, if you just knew the word colony and you didn't know the different parts of it, good point too about settlements or another word for it too, but let's, if you just knew colony, and you're talking about early American history, and you write, during the time when people lived in the colonies, comma, people living in colonies wanted freedom. Fine sentence, right? I mean, that's whatever. It gets it across. It's grammatically right. However, if we put it to during colonial times, an adjective, colonists wanted freedom. Again, style comes in and all of that. But if you can do this, A, it makes grammar easier because um, you don't have to find if you have a whole complex noun or singular, you don't know if it's singular or plural or where that noun is, and your verb is going to be off. It brings the verb and the noun closer together. And it also kind of just gets to the point, kind of gets us and then gets us into it, right? As opposed to spending one whole paragraph talking about people in colonies, people in colonies, blah, 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 blah. And it's a way to actually kind of express. And this is fun. This is sort of crafting once you can get to it, right? It's how do you want to say it and what's going to be highlighted? So it's a way, too, of teaching, OK, colonies, colonial, colonists, colonized, colonization. Um, OK, so this is, and I know this is so hard to see, and I apologize. I'm going to read it. So these were <coughs> college examples. So I would do online tutoring for a lot of um, college students. Again, trying these college students trying to display really complex thoughts, which is what you do in college and what we want our GED students to do as well, but didn't have the vocabulary for it or didn't have the right forms of it. So one sentence would be, in this democracy world, human rights are becoming more and more important. She was going for something, right? She knew that there was something there. She was looking for a democratic world, world but she just didn't have it at her fingertips. China is the fastest rising economy country today. Again, going for something economic, right? This didn't know it. And again, this is a great, I mean, they're taking a stab at it. They're knowing stuff that, but it's also frustrating as students to know that you don't know, right? To know that it's like, I know this isn't quite right. I want to say this, but I don't know how. So you kind of take a stab. Taking a stab is great, but let's help them by explicitly telling them, okay, what you really need right here is an adjective to describe world, right? Right now you're using a noun. How do you do that? This is the lesson how you do it. Hi. Okay, so this, and again, you can't understand. So I did a study, um, this is where this all comes from, where I was teaching these morphology words within a community college writing center for about 100 students or so. I'm not going to go into the details about it because it's very academic and boring, but um, I did do a control and treatment, and we gave sentence combining here. So we did a pre-test pre and a post-test. Half the group got these sentence combining lessons, kind of what I'm talking about now. Half the group did not. So if we start with the control, right, the ones who um, didn't get any intervention, just did the status quo of grammar teaching, however that was done, their pre-assessment to, so this is the sentences, and I know this is really hard to see, but I asked them to combine these sentences. The student felt confusion, period. The students wanted advice, period. The advice would help, period. Combine those in a way to make one sentence, changing the word forms. So a pre-assessed attempt of a control group the students felt confused and wanted advice. Fine. Post. The students felt confused and wanted advice to help. Fine. Not a whole lot of change, right? Here, in the treatment, the ones that had the intervention, uh, pre is, the students felt confused and needed advice that would help. Post. The confused students needed helpful advice. Okay? So it just said it's like they can just get that and do that. And then you can switch it around. I mean, that's a boring sentence in itself, but at how least long, you know. How long did it, uh, did it take them to This sentence? one was, this was a 10-week intervention, and it was uh, in a writing center, and they had about 15-minute um, lessons three times a week or so, but really little things, which I'm going to share with you in a second. I know you're all asking me just to get right to it. Um, but same thing here. The snake was slow, period. The snake moved his coils down the tree, period. The tree had moss. What is that? The coils glistened a pre in the, in the control. The snake moved his shiny coils down the mossy tree, or three. Shiny coils. Shiny yeah. coils, thank you. <laughs> shiny coils down the three. Um, post in the control. The snake moved his glistened coils down the moss tree very slowly. I mean, there's improvement there, right? I mean, so they, they got something out of the standard one. Um, in the treatment. The slow snake moved his glistened coils down the moss tree and post. The snake slowly moved his glistening coils down the mossy tree, okay? So again, we taught, I mean, we taught to the test, so it's not that 
<laughs> incredible that the results change, but it does tell you something that there is some difference there. Um, and then qualitatively, too, in talking with the students and also the tutors, they were saying things like, I never understood parts of speech and grammar of morphology. It helped me learn a lot and improve on my grammar. They helped me with the reasoning of the structure of a sentence. So again, instead of just that killing drill kind of, I don't know that kill. Um, it's really that reasoning. OK, like what am I doing here with these words? And then um, someone said, I never really got the difference between adjectives and adverbs, but now it makes sense. And that's something that I always found, especially with adults, is that they're all, you, it's something like you feel like you should know, right? Is that you don't, but then you're afraid to ask. And I, because it's, it's hard, you know, and I still catch myself like, wait, is that an adverb or what is that doing in here? But it's just to stop and to think. And then once you can do that for yourself, as opposed to memorizing all these rules and knowing that, you know, and what, it's confusing. So it's more really asking yourself and getting the students to look at a sentence and say, okay, what is that word doing in here? And how is it doing it? And do I like it or do I not like it? Or how would I do it differently? So there's some agency there. At least that's my hypothesis. And so that's what it's, it did. It just, it's, so instead of academic writing, instead of it being by, ruled by some universal fixed law, right? God came down and said, you will only use commas here. You will only use adverbs this way. They can experiment with saying, eh, you know, there's like a lot of social influences here. It's a lot of style. It's about how do I want to communicate? Um, and then just a deeper engagement in language.